So today we will be um, understanding, like the basic understanding what AI is, and we'll be able to like determine like the difference between something that's AI and something that's not. So this is topic one. Okay, so AI stands for artificial intelligence. So if we like, if we look at the word artificial, um, it means something that's like created by a human and something that's like not natural. So can anybody give me an example of something that's artificial? Yeah, I have the artificial flower in my home. So I know there are something plastic, which is artificial. Yeah, so that's similar to my example. I thought of like this artificial grass and artificial snow and like a robot because all of these are not natural, like not naturally just like there and they were created. And if we look at the word intelligence, um, it means like, like um, it's kind of like how sm like smart, and it's uh like the ability to be creative and learn. So, is there any other examples of what makes someone intelligent? You can say in the chat or you can just say it. Yeah, anybody can put some idea in the chat or speak out. Yeah, by my understanding, uh, even sometimes uh, the dog in my home shows some intelligence because he can learn something like after I feed him a couple of time, he know how I supposed to feed. So he know go to his own like food and ask me, oh, it's time for us to feed him. So I think there are some intelligent, not human, of course, some other animal also have. Yeah, like be able to learn. And um, someone said that like knowing things and being able to like, like that's kind of like being able to learn stuff and being able to like make your own decisions and understand like your surroundings. So the like the proper definition of artificial in artificial intelligence, if we put the two words together, it's a program um, for machines so that they can like think like humans and um, they can learn by themselves. So um, some examples of AR, AI, <coughs> AI, it's like Siri, Google, um, Alexa and like humanoid robots. Um, some of you may have heard of like these robots, but they're able to like, um, like talk and have conversations with humans. And some of you may have not known that Google is actually AI, but it adapts to your searches. So technically it's AI. So um, the when the word AI was like first like said or like thought about was in 1956 and about more than 10 years later, the f first um, mo uh, robot, on your phone was built and it could like uh like list instructions and then there's a supercomputer built that could beat the world's best chess player but the person who built the supercomputer couldn't even beat the world's best chess player so the robot was like better at chess than the creator and then in 2002 um the robot there was a robot that could like vacuum your house. Some of you guys might have one. Uh, it's like that, like circular, circular um, robot that like uh, goes around your house. And now, 
Um, we have robots that can have conversations with humans and like dance or like even smart homes when you like tell your, uh, like if you tell the app to like turn off your lights or something. So now let's look at this quick video of a robot that can have a conversation with, um, with like another human. Can you hear this? Yes, I can hear. Oh, not not able to hear this one. Okay. Can you How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Glad to hear. What is your name? I'm Chris. Chris. Are you nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you okay if I shoot a video of you? Absolutely. So Amica, what are you? I am a humanoid robot. So as you can see, this robot can like respond to basic questions and even have like it can even move its face and um like uh know its surroundings. Like for example, when the person waves at the robot, the robot waves back. So what do you think AI will be like in the future? How do you think it will grow in advance? Yeah, we can put the word in chat or speak out. I just throw some of my own observation. Um, something I observed is uh, through my working uh, is that uh, we do not really have to remember uh, all of this instruction. For example, we used to try to learn the coding and through the example. Of course, we still learn that, but we do not have to remember all of these details uh, with a co-pilot, like what I am using every day. Um, I can write something in text, for example, write the unit test for blah, 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 and they can generate some code. Um, of course, I should understand what they are generated. Uh, they may sometimes generate some garbage. Uh, I should identify which part of the code is workable and which part of the code is garbage. Uh, sometimes they generate the code which not always makes sense. But for most of the part, amazingly, uh, it works out of box. I mean, 80% of time, I would say the code have the good quality, as good as what I can think. Uh, another 20%, you have to make some change. So that's something I think in the future, uh, if you are a programmer, um, you should adapt the AI tools and it can dramatically increase the productivity. But on the other hand, unfortunately, I have to tell you the truth, is that uh, every company will hire fewer developer. Um, but I believe they will have some other field uh, will be like the new job will be great. Uh, that's my understanding uh, wow. because the AI is here. Yeah, that's a good idea. So like in the future, they could help with like human jobs more. Um, So like some ideas are they could like do like uh simple tasks, like uh putting the laundry in the laundry machine, the laundry machine, or like making a simple meal um, they could also do more repetitive tasks to save like uh humans time, so they could like fill out paperwork because that can take a while, and they can respond to like customer service emails because many big companies get uh a lot of emails, and it takes a very long time to like sort through all of them. So AI could help with that. But AI might also be able to like help uh, teachers, help uh, healthcare workers, and even like check out stuff. Cause like right now, um, like if you go to some stores, they already have like a self checkout. But uh, AI can help with that more if um, 
like if self checkout becomes like a little unsafe and people start like shoplifting or something and AI can like uh, make sure everything's like weighed correctly. But remember that like AI is the program, it's not the physical item. So like, for example, this robot, that's like the physical like robot is not AI, it's the program that the robot runs on. So now we're gonna watch this video and we're gonna decide if this toy is AI or if it's just programmed to do like, just to like, it just runs on a program and doesn't think or adapt. So before you answer this question, um, we're gonna go over like the four main ideas of what makes AI AI. And um, we're gonna look at this other example and watch this video too. And after we go over the four ideas, we're going to decide if these two are AI. We spend so much of our lives driving from place to place. Stop. Right here? Yes. Save us a seat. Shouldn't it be easier and safer to get where we want to go? Since 2009, our team at Google has been developing fully self-driving technology and testing it on real city streets every single day. Until, after more than a million miles, we were ready to take a big step forward. In 2015, we completed the world's first truly driverless ride on public roads. Just a person in a car, no steering wheel, no pedals, navigating everyday traffic. Well, I've never been in Austin, Texas. Now I'm driving in Austin, Texas. found experience for me to be alone in a car. A very important segment of my life was cut away when my vision failed, and a self-driving car would give me a huge part of my life back. This is just the beginning. We're looking ahead to a new way, a better way for everyone. Okay, so now that we looked at those examples, uh, I'm gonna discuss. I'm gonna discuss um, what like makes AI AI. So, 
here is like a model that um, summarizes it. So the first point is it's like the program's able to sense and understand its environment. So they usually do that through sensors. Um, the second one is they're able to plan, make, de make decisions and think logically. So, and the third one is they're able to adapt and learn. Um, there's like computers that if you give them like giant uh, like libraries full of the data, they can like learn uh, with it. And like, for example, predict like the stock market. Um, the fourth one is its ability to interact with humans and its environment. And most of all, this isn't like why it's um, AI, but AI can make an impact on society in both positive and negative ways. So now um, with those four points in mind, let's uh, discuss if this dog is AI or not. So the first question is, does it sense and understand its environment? Okay, so some of you are saying yes. So why do you think it under, what's an example of how it understands its environment? Yeah, it saw the ball and went after it. So that's very good. So it's the first one is um, it passes the test. So now let's look at the second one. Does it plan or make its own decisions? You can either say yes or give an example. Yeah, it makes its own decisions and it does that based on like, for example, what time of the day it is. Um, and like, it was like sad when it saw like the girl in leave. So the third one is, can it learn over time? Does it like adapt? And you can just say yes or no. Okay, so can you give me an example of how it like learned? So if you remember in the video, um, it predicted like how the humans would behave and um, they like knew like that the humans were trying to like um, pet it and like hug it. And the fourth one is, does it interact with the people or its environment? And why do you think like, how do you think it does? Like, what's an example? Yeah, someone said that it recognized the people and someone else said that uh, the dog ran up to the person when it saw it. Okay. It also, um, like responded to the voice and the facial expressions. So the final uh, the final question is, does this dog seem intelligent or is it just following a program? And to help you think about this, it, uh, if you have a dog, does it act similar to your dog? Yeah, I can answer this one. Uh, actually, I have a dog just right over here. He laid down here. And yeah, the eyeball looks like he learned something and really acts like a dog. For example, when girls uh, are really trying to go out, he follow and chase, uh, not chase, just follow them. And sometimes he he will show the face, uh, change the uh, uh, rolling around the head. So he's really like a real dog and act like a dog. 
Yeah. Like it it showed emotions when the to summarize it showed emotions when the uh, girl was leaving. So do you think this dog is considered artificial intelligence? Yeah, so everybody's agreeing. And I think it's artificial intelligence too. Okay, so now let's go um, look at the second example and think of if it um, like senses and understands its environment for the car. So the car, it uses its cameras to like if you see up here, it uses its camera to like see the surroundings and it uses other sensors to like know when other cars are around. And it knows when it enters, like when the person enters a car. So I think it passes the first example, I mean, the first question. Do you think the car makes its decisions on its own? Yeah, it drives and like when it sees like a red light or something, it stops by itself. So it does make decisions. Do you think the car can learn over time and how? Yeah, people are saying it learns um how to drive, it learns how to follow directions, and it learns like how to like avoid like accidents that might have happened in the past. Not with the car, but like in general. And finally, um for the fourth one, I mean for the fifth one, I mean not for the fourth one, does it interact with people in its environment? Okay, so people are saying it does interact with the environment because it follows like traffic rules and it knows like when the person gets into the car. But um, someone said that for number three, uh, it doesn't learn over time. And that can be true, but it um, like learns how to navigate like the highway or like, um, like, if it knows, like, the person, like, say if the person always goes into this car, then it, like, has the same, like, it knows its settings, like, where to go. So it can learn at least a little. But maybe, like, not like a human would. So are self-driving cars AI? Do you think they are AI or are they just like programmed to like stop at stoplights and like go when it's green? So someone said that Someone said that, um, like, let me just like redefine what AI is because AI is like a program, but it doesn't like just fall up, run off the program. It learns by itself. So the kind of main thing is that it's able to like learn and like understand. So since it like doesn't really um, like learn too much, only like the basic things like knowing the settings for like a specific person, it's probably like someone said, it's a mix of AI and programming. Yeah, I, I like to add a little bit of the, um, like the feedback, what I get from what I read. 
Um, anybody heard the term uh, Elon Musk talking about the robot taxi? Okay, so robot taxi will be uh, start by next month. And of course, we also heard a lot of um, atomic uh, fully self-driving car service in China and also in the United States. Uh, so we have to make a little bit um, understanding of what's the difference between fully atomic, so that's self-driving car and the AI driven. It's, it's two different uh, concepts. Atomic self-driving car do not have to be AI driven. So that means you do not have to use the AI to make the decision. You can base on the sensor, for example, uh, you you see that uh, black uh, sensor on top of the car. So that's really uh, the radar sensor. Also, they may have the camera. Um, so it's called the uh, 360 degree camera. So they can really capture all of this object around the uh, car and make the decision. So that part is really what we call the first generation of self-driving. Um, it's developed start from the Google and uh, GM, couple of other company. So they are mostly programming, make the decision based on the data they collect through the sensor and camera. But now since about two years ago, two or three years ago, more and more self-driving car use of uh, AI to, to make the decision. What's the difference between them is that, for example, you, when you have the camera, see there's a left turn and but based on your data on the map there's no such left turn so based on the programming you have to go straight you cannot make the left turn but since the ai provide more like intelligence make the decision instantly by learning so they can make the decision to make the left turn. It's pretty much like the human, right? So the human know when there's a intersection and when there's a new branch or when to make the change, not always follow the rule. We follow the rule probably 80, 90% of time, but another 10%, we know how to make the instant decision. So that's fundamental difference. It's not true to say self-driving car is always driven by AI. No, that's not true. Uh, traditionally, they are mostly driven by the programming. So that means the program use a map, use a GPS, use a camera, use a sensor, and make the decision, what we call the pre-program. So they are really make the decision even before they come over there. So when they are really at that road, for example, they drive on the highway, they know exactly where it is, when they should exit. But if they have a new exit, they do not really know that it's not in the GPS, they will not really go out. But the AI means even they never really have that in the map, in GPS, or whatever uh, the previous data, the clock, they can still make the decision. So that's a fundamentally different. Okay, so that's my uh, five cents, thank you. Yeah, okay. So what he basically said was that um, like most like auto drive cars, they're just like programmed to like, you know, stop or like go. And like whenever it sees a person, you know, like stop. So, but summarize um, what makes like AI different is that even if like, if it like um, maybe it hasn't seen a sign before or something, but it adapts to like over time, like what to do. So basically it's able to adapt. So um, some people like, let's identify why these um, three examples are not AI. So for the calculator, even though it's able to like, even though it, like it, it seems smart to be able to like, calculate um arithmetic math um it's really is just like programmed to do that and it doesn't like grow or think on its own and the second one is this is a common misconception but 
autocorrect is not AI. Um, it's already like programmed to just to like follow like a dictionary and just like whenever uh, something's like spelled slightly wrong, then it corrects it. But like whenever like something's really spelled wrong, it doesn't recognize it at all. And the final one, um, like automatic doors, those are not AI because they're just they just have a they just follow a sensor. When the sensor senses motion, it just opens. So based on the four big ideas, can you think of other examples of AI and what human behaviors does AI mimic? So you can just like, like for example, um, like, did you know that Face ID is AI? Because um, even if like, like if you scan your face one time and then it like no, it recognizes your face, but then like even a few years later, um, it will keep like unlocking the phone for you because it can adapt to like how your face changes. And like, if it's like, so like it's technically considered AI. So can you think of any other examples? Yeah, like an AI-based um robot that can vacuum is in a good is a good example because they can like they can like scan your house and like recognize um where to vacuum. So we need to think of something that like can like understand its environment, um, like plan or think logically or and um just like learn. Yeah, many of you have heard of ChatGPT. It's a chatbot. And you know it's not programmed because even if you like say something that is like um similar to something else, it will generate something completely different. And it's kind of hard for it to be programmed because there's like so many like things you can ask it. So um, if you can't think of anything else, uh, did you know, so like you already know there's like chatbots like ChatGPT where you can like have a conversation with it, but some of you might have not known that um, you can also like generate images with AI, uh, create stories or like um, have it recognize like a drawing or something. So like, for example, this website has, um, like this website uses AI to like create those things. For example, if like, can someone give me an example of um, like a, a piece of art you wanna see, like, or like an image? Okay, so someone said like, for example, a cat, a orange cat on a fence wearing a parachute. So let's see um, what it creates with the description. So um, 
we can like choose the style, I guess. And it generates that, which is like kind of how we described it. But if you like use um AI generating images a lot, you'll know that it's not that good at it yet. So like, for example, if we like asked it to like, um, if you ask like basic math, you know, like um, like a picture of a book, and let's see what it generates. Like as you can see, um, it does generate the book, but it doesn't like really know what to write in the book. So it just like writes some like random characters. So I'll send this link in the chat and um, you can try it and generate your own image and see how good it's at. So it can also create the stories? Yeah. Okay. So we can try that too. Can we give it? We try? can, like, a story about a cat trying to find its way home, and we'll see what it creates with this description. Um. Oh, it designed it. Okay, so maybe we'll try bookings instead. One second. Okay. So like, if we try this again, like a story about a cat trying to find its way home, we'll see if it can do that. Okay, so it does generate like a pretty um nice story, so and it generates images with it along. So, <laughs> um, that's very cool. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting story. So, but if you if you like um if you like uh like ask a similar thing like a story about like um a dog trying to find its way home, it probably generates something similar because. Uh, there's like, so if you ever like ask AI to like write something for you, like if you ask it to like, I don't know, write a story, um, you can automatically, or like a letter to someone, you can, you can automatically, um, it's kind of obvious that it's AI because it's like uses like such like a natural language and like words that people wouldn't usually use. And it's like, not really like human like. So for example, um, or like there's like websites um that can like detect if something's written by AI even if if you like ask it to write about something really specifically because AI always uses like especially like um like the most common AI websites it uses like very common phrases and like phrases that you would like find um just like commonly so. It's pretty easy to detect if something's AI currently. So um, now, if you ever are interested in coding, there's like a website. Um, many of you probably heard of it before, but it's called Scratch. And you can create your own um, projects with it. So for example, and it like teaches you the basics of coding without actually like needing to know the index or anything. So for example, I have like this cat here and 
um, the start button is when you click this. So for example, I say, say hello for two seconds when I click that, it does it. So if you ever wanna like learn the basics of like coding and like just like how it works, then you should try this website too. Okay, that's all for me today. And I hope you all liked um, the class. That's great. Thank you so much. And yeah, appreciate for your time to prepare for this wonderful material. And uh, next Thursday, uh, Alexei uh, will have the second topic, uh, how machine learning um, is, is learning. So yeah, uh, I hope to see all of you coming back. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please uh, remember to post that on the Google Classroom. Uh, Ali, would you also please give uh, at least two practice uh, so we can post this practice in the Google Classroom. So that's really like some sort of practice of the seminar. Okay, again, thank you. And you have a great weekend. Thank you, bye.